Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on Smith Chart. Earlier on, I have done a part one series discussion on Smith Chart. Basically, over there, I define how can we actually make use of Smith Chart in order to resolve some of the RF issue. Over this video, okay, I'm going to discuss some key factors, which is the key position on the Smith Chart. This will be the part two series discussion on the discussion on Smith Chart, the earlier on series discussion part one, and maybe also the future discussion on Smith Chart. I have put the playlist under the description. So please take a look on those video if you're keen to know more about Smith Chart. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like button and also the subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Guys, please also give me some form of feedback through the comments so that I can increase or improve the overall standard of this channel. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. Okay, so let's start by discussing some of the key positions on the Smith chart. On the series one, I have discussed that this line, okay, which is called the resistor line, which means that they don't have any value on the reactants. Okay, so over this video, okay, I further want to discuss these three points. One is basically the resistance value of zero ohm, okay, which fall on the extreme left of the Smith chart. Okay, so once we have zero ohm, okay, you can illustrate that it actually implement like a short circuit. On the other side, okay, when the resistance is infinity, okay, again, it can almost implement like an open circuit. Okay, another point that I want to highlight is basically right at the middle of the Smith chart. Basically, we have this point which is called 1, which we understand this as a match. So this point here, the characteristics impedance is exactly the same as the transmission line. Okay, so imagine that the transmission line having a characteristic impedance of 50 ohm. So basically, this point here, the source of the load have exactly the same characteristic impedance as the, let's say, the transmission line of 50 ohm. Next, I'm going to discuss, okay, how can we actually convert the impedance to emittance or how can we perform a conjugate points using the Smith chart? Okay, so let's look at this number, which is the impedance value, let's say. So how can I actually obtain the emittance value? So what I need to do is basically I draw a line that cross the point of origin. Okay, so this is basically the point that I told you that is matched, which is one. So I draw a line that cross the point of origin exactly the same distance, okay, which means that the distance from here to here and here to here, they have the same distance. So this point here will be my emittance value. Same wise over here. So for example, if I want to find the emitter value of this point, okay, what I need to do is basically I draw a straight line across the point of origin, exactly the same distance. Okay, so that will be my point of emittance and this will be my impedance. Okay, next I'm going to share about conjugate. Okay, so how to draw a conjugate? So what you need to do is basically you draw one straight line, cut down the so-called resistance circle. Okay, make sure that it's a straight line, cut down all the way. And this will be the conjugate point. Okay, clear on this. So basically what you need to do is just draw one straight line. Okay, cut through the resistance line. And this will be your conjugate point. Okay, same over this side here. So what you need to do is, let's say you are at the bottom. What you need to do is basically you need to cut through the resistance line. Make sure it's the same distance again. Okay, that will be your conjugate point. Okay, next. Okay, I'm going to discuss about impedance and emittance charts. Okay, so this diagram here shows the impedance and also the emittance charts. So the emittance charts is simply the impedance charts rotate through 180 degree about the origin. So this is an impedance charge. Imagine you rotate 180 degree, okay, you actually become an emittance charge. Okay, again, for emittance charts, you can also easily transform them to impedance charge by rotating them again 180 degree. Okay, so I want to further discuss on this. Okay, so if you take a look over here, okay, you can see that when we actually have a plus J term, okay, they actually appear 
above the resistance line. Can you see here? When I actually have a plus J term, when I has a negative J term, okay, actually is underneath the resistance line. Okay, as for emitter, okay, you can see that once I have a minus B term, okay, which is the subsistence, okay, so this will be a minus subsistence item. If I have a positive subsistence, then it will be underneath the resistance line. So this is completely opposite from the impedance charge. As I shared earlier on, okay, impedance is basically 1 over impedance to get my emittance or 1 over emittance to get my impedance. So they behave completely different. Okay, Later on, maybe in the example, I will illustrate more on this for you to understand better. Okay, next. Okay, so I'm going to discuss basically on three components, R, L, and C. Okay, so how can we actually plot the R, L, C onto the Smith chart? Okay, so for example, for this case here, I have a purely resistant value, okay, which means that in my rectangular, okay, this reactance is actually equal to zero. I have purely a resistant value or purely resistor over here. So the resistor value can vary from zero to infinity, for example. Okay, over here, you can see on the Smith chart, if we still remember what we had discussed earlier on, okay, right at the extreme left, okay, will be a resistor value of zero, which is a short circuit. On the other side, I have a resistor value of infinity, which is open circuit. Right at the middle is basically what we call the mesh. So basically, the point of the resistor can be any point over here if it's a purely resistor value, any point that appears along this line. So basically, this is how you can plot the resistor value. Any point, for example, let's say this is 1. So what I need to do is I plot the point here, so which is equal to 1. So this is how we plot the resistor value. Okay, next, how to plot the inductor value okay, in series with a resistor value of 1. Okay, so again, if this is a resistor value of 1, basically, I identify this is a resistor value of 1. And next, I need to plot the value of L. So the L can be from 0 to infinity again. So once it's at 0, they will appear over here. So once they move to infinity, they actually move along this circle. So again, based on the different value of L, you will plot one of the points here. Okay, again, like what I mentioned, later on, I will have some example to let you fully understand on this main chart. So in short, the L value will be varies along this line, depending on the value of the inductor. I basically will plot one of the points over here. Okay, one thing that I want to highlight for inductor, it actually happened above the resistance line. Can you see here? They are actually happened above the resistance line. And next on capacitor, Okay, so I switch the inductor to a capacitor. Okay, again, they have almost the same characteristics, except that it actually happened underneath the resistance line. Okay, again, the capacitor value changed from zero all the way to infinity. Okay, based on the capacitor value, I will be able to plot one of the points. So basically, this is the key difference between inductor, okay, if, which is happened above the resistance line. And if you have a capacitor, it will happen underneath the resistance line okay so i hope this is clear for you guys next okay i just want to do a very quick key conclusion to discuss some of the series inductor shunt inductor series capacitor and shunt capacitor how should we rotate the figure okay so basically when we have a series inductor for example okay which means that at the red circle okay which means that over here for example if i have a series in Doctor, I actually move it in a clockwise up clockwise direction. Okay, which means that over here I actually move in a up clockwise direction to implement a series L. Okay, so if I have a shunt, okay, so once if I have a shunt, I will actually concentrate on the emittance chart. Okay, so once I have a shunt again, it will be a up and it will be an anti-clockwise. Okay, for a inductor value. Okay, so if I have a shunt L, okay, what I need to do is I will use it on the emittance. Okay, I will be using the up. So for inductor, it's simply a up, whether it's clockwise or anti-clockwise, depend on whether it's in series or is it in shunt. So over here, you can see that if it's in series, 
okay, it will be moving in a clockwise direction. If it's a shun L, I will be moving up again, okay, but on an anti-clockwise direction. Same as for series C and shun C. So for series C, again, I will implement this in the impedance, okay, impedance charge. So basically, you can see over here, if I'm in a series C, I will be going down, okay, it will be going down as a clockwise direction, which I have illustrated earlier on. So earlier on, I have illustrated that if I have an L, they will appear over here. And if it's a C, it will appear over here. Okay, so basically all this is actually represented by a series. So once if I have a shun, okay, I will make use of my Hamilton charts. Okay, so in short, okay, for inductor, it will be moving up. Okay, for capacitor, it will be moving down. Okay, depend on whether is it capacitor or inductor. So basically this is important. So basically... For a shunt capacitor, basically what I need to do is basically it will have a down clockwise direction. Okay, so with this, I think you have a better idea of Smith chart. Okay, so on the next example, okay, I will discuss how can we actually plot all these points onto a Smith chart. I will give you some example and hopefully from the example, you are able to understand the key position of Smith chart. With this, i like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. See you guys.